In the Shakuhachi introduction series, we've already looked at a range of fundamental topics, so I thought it'd be nice to change pace a bit and look at more advanced techniques like korokoro, koro, tamane, komibuki, etc. Some of these are special Shakuhachi techniques, some are also used on other instruments. Today I'll talk about korokoro, koro, and assuming this is helpful for you, maybe this can be the start of a mini sub-series in the Shakuhachi introduction series <laughs> on special techniques. All right, so I'll start with a demonstration. This is korokoro. Koro. It is often said that Kurokoro koro imitates the sound of cranes. And it's true that this technique is used a lot in the family of Tsuru no Sugumori pieces, so the nesting of the cranes pieces. And listening to it, it's easy to make the connection to the call of cranes. However, Kurokoro koro is not exclusive to these pieces, it is used in other pieces too. It has a reputation of being extremely difficult. Maybe you already heard the Japanese saying, Kubifuri san nen. It takes three years to shake your head, meaning it takes three years to learn to properly to do a kubifuri head vibrato. Often the reply to this statement is koro hachi nen. It takes eight years to do koro koro. I don't think it has to take that long. If you practice it regularly, then it should just take you maybe a few weeks or months at most. So let's look at this technique and how to practice it. Let's start with the pitch and the fingering of Ko. Ko has the same pitch as Ri. So this is Ri, this is Ko. The fingering of Ko is that hole five is open, four and three are closed, and one and two are closed alternatingly. So, so Ko actually has two different fingerings. When you compare closing holes one and two, you will notice that this produces different pitches. So, if we're just playing a ko as a full note, we have to use a different amount of medi to get the same pitch as re. I also should have mentioned that to play ko at re pitch, you have to play it in a medi position. So, just doing this is not enough to get to re pitch. You also have to play Medi. However, playing Koro Koro is about creating an effect, so we don't need to worry about the difference in pitch here. As a side note, there's an alternative fingering with four and five half open. So instead of this fingering, we open four and four, uh, four and five half, and one and two behave the same way. It sounds a bit different, so the tone color is a bit different. And some schools use this as the standard, but in KSK we use the other fingering, so I will continue to use that here. But basically all I'm saying here also applies for the other fingering. So that is ko. Koro koro means to swap between the two ko, opening holes one and two in turn. However, this is not an immediate change between the two fingerings. Instead, both hole one and two are closed at the same time before the other hole is opened. So. This alternating of one and two creates this typical koro koro effect. So if I play it at speed. Generally speaking, the effect is a bit unusual for shakuhachi because normally we try to make transitions between notes as cleanly as possible. But here we want the effect where we can hear this overlap between the two ko, basically resulting in an equal weighting between the notes themselves, so the ko, 
and the transitions between them. An important aspect of Kuro Kuro is that the speed is constant, so it is important to balance the two moving fingers. Or in other words, the resulting rhythm is a straight rhythm, not a swung rhythm. So a rhythm like this. Instead of For example, or the other way around. There is really only one speed, meaning there is not really a fast and a slow koro koro. But as with everything shakwachi, this is just a general rule, so take it with a pinch of salt. All right, now let's move on to how to practice koro koro. Different teachers have different approaches, and as always, I'm not saying that this is the only or maybe even the best way, but this is the way I found that worked best for me. The first thing to do is to slowly change between the two ko and to learn how the transitions sound. So, Again, as a side note, you will notice the different pitches between the two ko. For practice purposes, that's totally fine. When you do it this slowly, pay attention to the in-between sound. So, okay, do this as slowly as you like. The next step then is to speed this up a bit to a good speed so that you learn to move these fingers. This is what I call the one change exercise. The next one, you may have already guessed it, is the two change exercise. Play one ko, make the transition to the other ko and go back to the first one. Do it in such a way that the length of the transitions and the note in between have an equal weight. So. Once you get the hang of this, do the same exercise, but start on the other ko. So just now I started with this ko. Now start with the other ko first. Now the next step will gradually increase the number of changes. We just did two, now let's do three. Apologies, the demonstrations are on, aren't always the best, <laughs> but uh, it's just a bit awkward playing in this position so you can see it in the camera. That's my excuse anyway. You always need to have an excuse, I think, for everything in life. It makes life so much easier. As you may have already noticed, <laughs> there is a pattern here. For an odd number of changes, so one and three, the starting code simply alternates. So for one, or for three, However, if we have an even number of changes, we have to do two exercises for each ko. So, yeah, we always go back to the same ko. So we have to do a separate exercise where we start with the other ko. Okay, so after three, we continue with four. Again, starting with the other ko. Then we do five. And then we do six. Once you're comfortable with six transitions, it's usually possible to keep the koro koro just going indefinitely until your breath runs out, of course. If you find that difficult, practice with counting more transitions, seven, eight, nine, and so on. But this basically already is all you need to practice. Um, do these 
practices each number of transitions slowly at first and then gradually speed it up so that you get to the standard koro koro speed. That's how you practice koro koro, but it can be helpful to keep a few things in mind. So let me make a few more pointers here. Koro koro sounds much faster than it really is, whatever reality really is. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> what I mean is that the fingers actually don't have to move as fast as you think. What's different about koro koro is that rather than trying to move quickly enough to avoid the sound between two ko, we want this in between sound and it can feel like you're getting two sounds for the price of one or two sounds with just one movement. This is a pretty unique aspect of this technique and initially this can be a bit confusing and difficult to do, but the speed of the movement itself is really not that difficult. Then as with any exercise on shakuhachi, it's not important to get it right immediately. It will probably take a bit until you get to six fluent repetitions. As always, don't force it. When you notice you're starting to tense up, just leave it a bit and start again in your next practice. I said earlier that koro koro is just one speed, but there are cases where it slows down. When it gets so slow that the pitches of the individual notes can be made out, you need to adjust the playing position to the right angle in order to get the correct pitch. This aspect about the pitch is especially true when you stop on one note of the tuko and hold the note before going to the next note. So take care to adjust to the correct pitch to the correct merry position. Also a very common phrase, at least in Hongkyoku. But this is not the point to go into detail here. I just want to make clear that in situations like this, uh, in contrast to what I said earlier, don't worry about the difference in pitch between the two ko. In cases like this, you do have to get to the correct pitch, which is the equivalent of the re-pitch. Then, um, finally, you may already have noticed, um, when we have a large flute, so a 2.4 like this, the fingering of the right hand is so that we cover this bottom, uh, the second hole with this joint here instead of with this. So for a technique like koro koro, um, it doesn't change the technique itself, but it gets a, it takes a bit of time to get used to using this joint here instead of this joint, right? But the koro koro just works the same. So. Again, not the best demonstration, but this is really awkward. Anyway, the important thing here is that you understand the main point I'm trying to make here. Right, so koro koro on long flutes works just as on standard shakuhachi, but it's good to practice this a bit because to cover hole two, we're using a different joint of the index finger of the lower hand. Finally, there is also the special case of an upper hand koro koro in the piece sanan. What this means is that instead of doing this here, you do this with the left hand. Um, this is a very, very rare case. I'm just mentioning this here because, uh, well, this is really the practice that you need to do for doing Hongkyoku. Um, this here might occur as well. So this is a quick introduction to Koro Koro. It's not that difficult. It's a more advanced technique, um, as I said at the beginning. I don't think it takes eight years to really master the technique. If you just do a bit of practice on this every day um, in this manner that I suggested, I think you will make quick progress. I'll be adding a revised version of these notes to my shakuhachi playing guide, which has the slightly silly name How to Shakuhachi, and which is available to my Patreon supporters as one of the rewards on Patreon. So as you may have noticed, this was a very elegant segue into advertising my Patreon page. If you've not done so, um, it would really mean a lot to me if you check out the page and even more, 
if you subscribe to my Patreon as well, because this is one of the ways in which I can keep this YouTube channel going. Enough advertising. Um, oh, as always, uh, subscribe, like the video, please. It does make a big difference. Um, if you've not done so, please subscribe to the channel. That also makes a big difference, especially for my small channel. And it's really a good motivational boost for me as well if the subscriber count slowly increases. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. On such special techniques, special.